Before history is written, it's played. Before it's frozen in time, it's fought one shift at a time. Before it's etched in silver, it's carved in ice. What happens next will last forever. The Stanley Cup Final on ABC and ESPN Plus begins Saturday. Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. USAA. I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back for another episode of The Most Haunted City on Earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, And I'm JT Timmons. And we are going to be doing a ghost mail for y'all today. You've got ghost mail. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we get into today's episode, y'all, just a couple of announcements. Uh, the Texas Killing Fields live stream is up on Patreon now. So if you guys want to watch that, you can go ahead and head over there. Uh, when we are filming this, we have not gone to Texas yet. So mm-hmm. fingers crossed, y'all, that we caught some really cool stuff. And mm-hmm. you made it back. And you made it back. <laughs> We're coming, or you're hearing this from the grave. Um, How eerie would that be? That right? would be if, would, like, if like this episode went up and and we're like currently missing. <laughs> Oh my God! Let's what not put a that. joyful laugh that was. I know, literally. <laughs> what? What I an end! It. What an end for JT as a uh, true crime nut he is. Yeah, I mean, I that would be. He went as he lived. A true crime nut. Yes, mm-hmm. that would that would track a hundred percent. But yes, <laughs> so that live stream when you're hearing this should be up for y'all to enjoy. Uh, if you didn't get to watch it live, but. Uh, also, we have a few new parent junkies to thank. Do, 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 do. Uh, so we want to thank Enika Van Lyrop. Le- mm-hmm. Sorry if I butcher your last name, Enika. Um, and then the Silver Linings Handbook. Sheila Lynn, Jason Blair, and Ashley A.W. Thank y'all so much for Welcome joining to- Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say thank you for joining us over on the pair junkie side. But yep, yep. Welcome. But go ahead, JT. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting involved. No. It's good to see you all. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to that. Uh, we are excited to have you guys. Um, we're you're joining us at a great time for all the Waverly Hill stuff. Starting next month, we're going to do our deep dive into Waverly Hills and all the jazz that's going into that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you're you're in for a wild ride with us. And so, uh, when we are uh, for the rest of everybody who's listening to the um, podcast, we are going to be going to Waverly Hills on April twenty fourth. If you didn't know, now you know. It's gonna be a big one. It's gonna be a big one. It's gonna be a big one, y'all. It's gonna be fun. Exactly. It's gonna be really fun. Um, and we're bringing the Ghost Brothers with us, yes. so it's gonna be a really good time. As y'all know, if you watched anything from the Conjuring House, they are very hilarious and wonderful people. Um, so we're excited to bring them with us to Waverly Hills and see Louisville, Kentucky, mm, before the horses get in town. Um, <laughs> because if anyone's from that area, send in a ghost mail and tell us what's spooky around that area. We'd love to see some uh, some mm-hmm. something that uh, that may not be widely known. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we we did do uh, the cryptid series for <laughs> Kentucky as well. So we looking are looking forward to running into a meth hog. Yeah, we're <laughs> exactly <laughs> looking forward to that, and, and some of the uh, the creepy Louisville cryptids as well. So if there ain't no meth hogs, I don't want it. <laughs> I know. I know. You can get the barilla. At yeah. You. The no, barilla. I, want, I want a meth hog. Barilla. Did you know Cocaine Bear was actually in Kentucky? I didn't know that, but that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. It does make a lot of Animals sense. Animals doing drugs. Yes. 
So um, if you're a producer out there and happen to know anybody who worked on Cocaine Bear, I would like to see a Cocaine Bear versus Meth Hogs. Cocaine Bear versus Meth Hogs would be amazing. A sci-fi original. Yeah, it would, literally. It would be a sci-fi original. Get a Sharknado in there. <laughs> Honestly, that yeah. would be so cool. Mountain Shark. Mountain Shark. Mountain Shark. The Mountain Shark's coming for you. It's the Crick Shark. <laughs> the Crick Shark. <laughs> oh, that old Crick Shark. <laughs> the Crick Shark. Stop. But <laughs> Little Timmy got a great white baby shark. Threw it in the crick. <laughs> Threw it in the crick. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, if you know anybody out there, <laughs> let's make that happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, not the crick shark. <laughs> not the crick shark, but the meth hogs versus cocaine bear. Um, but let's get into our ghost mail, y'all. So we are kicking it off with Adriana. So, hi, my name is Adriana, and I have been having some weird experiences with dreams and sleep paralysis for pretty much my whole life. That's intense. Mm -hmm. Um, The first experience I can remember was when I was about seven years old and I would have these dreams of being chased by a clown. Nope. uh, Quite often around my neighborhood. Nope, nope, nope. And every time he would catch up to me, I would be bitten or hit. (laughs) That's horrible. Or um, if it's like killer clown. Bitten by a clown? That's horrible. Ooh. Wait. You know where that clown's mouth's been? There's a movie called clown i think it's called yes. clown yeah and it's i didn't he get bit by a clown and he, and turned into he a turns clown. into a yeah. clown yeah yeah it's like That's a lit. werewolf it's honestly it's yeah. honestly like really good it is it's mm-hmm. pretty good it's very his his transformation is disturbing yes, yes. it is Ugh. well uh, i shudder at the thought of a grown man in makeup biting me so it's uh, some ugh. people pay good money for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> sure i know <laughs> you got to go out to. <laughs> got to pay extra for that. You got to go out to Arizona for that type of stuff. But or where is Nevada. that? Nevada. Nevada. <laughs> Anyways, people in Arizona are going what? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, did you hear about this? <laughs> <laughs> or it's like um, in 2016. Remember when there were just like clowns running around yeah. and stuff? Mm. Yeah, that was not a good time for me. No, I was, I was not enjoying that at all. A, I, it, mainly in South Carolina, South it, Carolina, Florida too. Yeah, Florida it was all, too. It was it was a pretty widespread epidemic mm-hmm. of weird, a weird, weird gag, weird joke. Um, and I think it probably ended in violence to the clown. Probably. You know, yeah. Especially in this region. Yeah. Like, you, you stand on someone's property dressed like a clown, you're going to get shot. You are. Just don't do it. Don't, don't do that. It, it blows my mind that that's, that here is where all that happened. Mm-hmm. Where people are the most offensive right. of Literally. their property. Seriously. Like, yeah. There's nowhere else that's more defensive than the East Coast. It's so Southeast. true. Southeast. The but Southeast. Yes. Everyone's yeah. armed. And Texas. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, anyways, on to Adriana's clown problems. Yes, um, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> side note. <laughs> but yes, uh, when I would wake up the next morning, I would have bruises or bite marks nope. on my arms or legs. Wow, like, no, nope. what? No, nope. are you no. serious? No. Uh uh-uh. uh Oh no 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 no! I don't like that. Um, my little brother would experience the same thing around the same time. <gasps> Mm-mm. Ew. Our parents would be concerned and check on us constantly and even slept in the same room at, uh, as us oh my God. to see what was going on. And without fail, it would keep happening. Whoa. It eventually stopped as we got older, but that was the end of my experiences. Hmm. The weird dream started happening again around the age of 15 years old, but this time it was sleep paralysis. Every single time I would experience this, a girl would visit me. She scared me and refused to talk uh, about it. Um, and I refused to talk about it for fear that she would come back. Sometimes I would have sleep paralysis and see her, or I would see her in dreams that these dreams felt demonic. In these dreams, I would see upside down crosses, oh fire, and it would hear. I would hear screaming. Mm. I haven't seen her since sophomore year of college, but I have been experiencing new and more intense things. Oh. More recently, I have had multiple intense dreams and sleep paralysis. I got like chill bones. I know. Seriously. I got creepies. It's really creepy. I remember one time I was asleep and I felt like I woke up, but I couldn't move. And I was staring at the ceiling in my room. All of a sudden, I hear the front door like someone trying to knock it down. And very loudly, I hear someone say, get up, get up now. They're coming. I sit up and it's silent. 
I felt like I was awake, but everything was normal. So I, 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 so maybe I was asleep. It just seemed like I was awake. I've heard people say this could be a false awakening, but I have no clue. Where's our Where's our button? I don't know. Where Where is Where's the button? Jingles. Damn it, Jingles. Where's the button? Well, you're just gonna have to do it, Jay. Oh hell no! <laughs> that is correct. Exactly. Um, there was an, another incident where I had sleep paralysis and the covers were over my face, which for context, I am very claustrophobic. Pause for, for buttons. No, no, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. No, we're listening. Okay. Um, which for context, I am very claustrophobic, but it felt like someone was holding it over my face. Mm. Wow. I was freaking out because I felt like I couldn't breathe, but somehow I managed to say a Bible verse that I remembered from when I was little and it stopped. The last incident, the button is in the most bizarre place ever, y'all. That was the weirdest place imaginable for that, but Jingles. okay. Jingles is playing tricks on us. Or maybe one of the ghosts in the theater are like, I'm so sick of this button. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. But yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now that we have this... Um, so I couldn't breathe, but somehow I managed to say a Bible verse that I remembered from when I was little and it stopped. Huh. The last incident was, which was a couple of days ago, I was sleeping and oh. I felt like I was having sleep paralysis. I looked in the corner of my room to see a dark figure standing in the room, corner and I kept looking around to see if I could uh, see anything else. And when I looked back, I saw the same black figure leaning over me. Uh. I actually woke up and there was nothing in the room. I grew up Baptist slash Catholic and went to a Christian university. Anytime I would seek out answers, it just seems like I get the same ones. Pray, read your Bible, and make sure I'm not doing anything that would invite that stuff in. I mean, there's some truth to that, but at the same time... If it's already there, I have an immediate theory about what this is. Well... Let's let's yeah. we'll, we'll we'll get to it. Yeah. We got to finish reading all of the details. Yeah. But I agree on some aspects, but I am tired of not knowing what is happening and feeling helpless. Do you have book recommendations on stuff like this or can you get even give guidance on how to deal with this stuff? I feel like I am sensitive to this stuff, but I don't want to go about it the wrong way. I would like to be um, more open to it, but I don't know where to begin. Sorry for the long story, but if you have any questions, please let me know. That was not a very, uh, honestly, I need to know more about I your, need to know more. Yes. I need to know more about that clown. Right. And and here's here's my theory is my book recommendation is It by Stephen <laughs> oh King. Oh my god. And no, the reason being is that this doesn't this doesn't strike me obviously as a clown. This is something that wants that is like what are you afraid of at this very point in your life? I'm going to become it. That's mm. what I'm getting. I'm getting mimic. I'm getting Boggart. Uh, well, okay. Um, my my, you're crazy, girl. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm getting mimic. I'm getting you know potential uh, whatever can like demonic presence, even something mm -hmm. that can just transition into whatever you will be afraid of at that moment. Oh, a hundred percent. I do think it's morphing based off of certain. Um, fears mm -hmm. of yours especially because it's changed as you've aged but you keep getting more intense feelings which means that it is kind of attached to you in a way where it's feeding off mm -hmm. of the more energy you get as you age mm -hmm. the more powerful it becomes and it gets kind of sophisticated as it well it does it's learning um, you in a it's way because being claustrophobic and being held down by your blankets you know even just sleep paralysis on its own is a claustrophobic nightmare so yeah, there's there's a lot to unpack in that. And as far as like reading material, there's such a wide variety of of books that will detail or express or explain um, almost you know uh, very matter of factly. But the truth of the matter is, you're dealing with something spiritual, something singularly spiritual that you are involved in mm -hmm. so a lot of the piece that you're looking for is going to have to come from your structure you have the power to banish things that are bothering you but you have to have the tools 
So the question is, what what do you believe and what can you put your faith in strong enough to construct a protection for yourself? Right. Um, and that and that becomes like a big question because we could lead you down other paths. We could tell you about um, you know uh, paganistic rituals. We could tell you about um, uh, uh, crystals. We could tell you uh, about practices done by cultures all around the world. But in the end, a lot of it has to jive with you. Mm-hmm. The spirit seems to be intimately involved in your life and and knows a lot about what would cause you anxiety, pain, fear, and is capitalizing on it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's weird. (laughs) Well, and something, too, that I think might, uh, just as a starting point, just from the point that you made where you said that you remembered a Bible verse that helped, Mm -hmm. um, it sounds to me at least that that does bring you a level of feeling of comfort. Wearing even a uh, a crucifix at night when you sleep that could maybe make you feel comforted at least knowing that you're protected by something. Um, yeah, you can't really just let go of things that you're raised believing. It, it, it doesn't work like that, you know, um, because you can grow to understand things, but that doesn't change core beliefs. Mm -hmm. Core beliefs oftentimes are the source of our strength, uh, but they're also what is easily preyed upon. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. If you can find uh, icons that bring you comfort within a structure that you are intimately aware of or or have, you can put your faith into, then, you know, I would start there. Mm -hmm. I would start with the things familiar to you, and then expand. That give you comfort mm-hmm. and then build upon that uh, rather than running headlong into a brand new arena where a lot of it's going to be challenging what you already believe. Right. Uh, which could make you more vulnerable before it gives you strength. Um, so, yeah, uh, definitely uh, look into more potent um remedies within your faith structure Mm -hmm. while exploring all the other things that we we mentioned crystals and um uh you know sage and all the things that people salt things that people use but know that it's your your intent that gives these things great greater effect Mm -hmm. i'm a big believer in a mod podge um Mm -hmm. faith system Mm -hmm. um making it uniquely your own but yeah using that as a starting point could be helpful or even i also find at least for myself i find comfort in knowledge yes and so um so i know like i'm sure you've heard a million times from your pastors or whoever but uh the bible uh does have you know a lot of interesting input at least in the way um, that could be a nice starting point as well. It is kind of a, it's a spell book in a way for, mm-hmm. I know some sure. people don't love that sentiment, but. Well, um, and don't forget that there are books excluded from the Bible, mm-hmm. you know, the gospel of Thomas, the gospel of Mary, you know, um, the um, lost books of Solomon. Uh, those are available mm-hmm. and they expand upon what you already understand and know. They give you a richer tapestry to uh to to house your faith in so be be aware that there are very hesitant to to uh endorse any one method (laughs) of dealing with these things um the more you know the better Mm -hmm. you can absolutely be researching all the way but because there's an immediacy to what's happening right yeah uh build on what you do know and what has worked for you in the past you know reciting you know a biblical passage absolutely we hear that a lot oh yeah Uh, especially in sleep paralysis Mm -hmm. a lot of people just find Mm -hmm. calling out uh to jesus three times in the throes of sleep paralysis can cause you to uh to dislodge from the condition right so uh just know that that there are lots of prescriptions out there um, but they have to work within your structure mm-hmm. or you will, it, it might backfire. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's important to note also, uh, that the majority of people that we've talked to, uh, who have sleep paralysis, which are a lot of, you know, my friends and just, you know, just people that we know, um, 
they weren't told about sleep paralysis right. before having it. No. Therefore, <clears throat> saying uh, saying Jesus's name three times, like almost all of them have said that's the thing that works, that has come naturally to them. That was organic during the during what was happening. Right. No, your mom doesn't just, you don't just get, you're not just born and then, you know, your mom says, all right, if you have sleep paralysis, say Jesus's name three times, that doesn't happen. So, you know, um, I think it's important to note that that came organically to to the many people that that works for. Yeah. There was um, also a long time ago we had a story. Somebody had a mm-hmm. type of sleep paralysis and they called out to Brigitte, I yes. believe. Yeah, that's um, right. So even deities that you feel deeply, it, it, because it is that intent, it's that power mm-hmm. that you're giving right. behind this. Like I have something that's watching over me, mm-hmm. that is protecting me that is more powerful than you, whatever you are. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I would agree with that. Um, but yeah, the I know we didn't give you exact reading materials, but whatever feel, create your Mod Podge, you know? Mm-hmm. Create whatever you feel the most safe with. Uh, and that's a great way to start, but. Clown bites. The, ugh, <laughs> God, that's horrible. Yikes. That's horrible. Um, but yes, I'm sorry to hear that that's happening to you, but yes, please send us more stories and keep us updated on anything else that is happening. Um, but mm-hmm. also, did you grow up in Illinois? Ooh. Just a question. Interesting. Oh no. Oh my God. Oh no. Just a question. <laughs> I know exactly where that's mm-hmm. going. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, moving on to Jen. <laughs> so hi, ghostly gang. You've got ghost mail. Ooh. I've had a lot of ghostly encounters, but this is the most recent and it is fresh in my mind. I hope you and your listeners, if you read it on air, yes, hello, Jen, we are reading it on air. Mm-hmm. I hope that you and your listeners enjoy it. My husband and I recently moved to Pooler, Georgia. Ooh. Old Pooler, not new Pooler. LOL. Okay. Uh-huh. Our house is just a mile and a half outside of the city limits of Savannah. We are originally from Atlanta, and we sometimes worked conferences in Savannah, so we got very familiar with the area. Local ghost mail. Yes. Uh, we moved away from uh, from Georgia for several years right after I retired, but circumstances led us to come back home, and the Savannah area is close to some of our family members, so we came here. Mm. Uh, When we first arrived in the area a couple of weeks before Halloween last year, we stayed in a rental right off of Forsyth Park in Savannah while we waited to do a final walkthrough and close on our house in Pooler. Of course, there was a ghost in that old home in Savannah, but she was a friendly, cheerful hostess type woman um, who seemed to be glad we were there and didn't disturb us at all. Well, that sounds like Savannah. Yep. I always joke on my tours and stuff. And I'm like, our Savannah's um, sometimes, or sometimes our ghosts here, they realize they're in Savannah and they don't like to leave. It's kind of a common trope with our ghosts. Yes, you know? it is. Uh, which I guess is good for tourists. You know, they yeah, don't absolutely. really like leaving, um, which happens when you're alive too. So yeah, that's, that's true. Not many people get out of Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to work as a professional psychic medium in Atlanta. So mm. I knew she was there, but otherwise there was no signs of a haunting. Just a cheerful and even celebratory energy. No problem. The house we were buying in Pooler was only five years old, a super cute cottage style, and was right for the two of us. There was literally no issues at the inspection, and the final walkthrough went well, but we found out after we closed that it had already had two owners. The first owner retired and built the house, but sadly he passed away only three and a half years after retiring and settling into his dream home. His wife sold it to a young couple who moved in after that, and they left only a year and a half later. Enter my husband and I. Same day as closing, we began moving boxes into the house. I was unpacking some things while my husband ran to the store. I was alone in the house for the first time, and I was immediately afraid. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I am older with a lot of life experiences. I worked, as I said earlier, as a medium, so I also have a lot of experiences with the dead. My sister is a longtime paranormal investigator in the Atlanta area, and I've been on paranormal hunts and taken paranormal classes, taught mediumship classes, have done house cleansings and for people, etc. I wow. read, uh, I read tarot and do energy healing. Not much frightens me, but I was immediately feeling terrified in our new house. Uh oh, in all caps. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I tried a few different things to handle this haunting on my own here, sage and speaking to the ghost directly and such with no luck. I kept having the feeling that someone was watching me and coming up close to me or behind me. I couldn't see what I, uh, what it was, which is a bit unusual as I am clairvoyant, but I knew something was in the house with me. I'm pretty sure that fear was blocking me. I did keep seeing these terrifying images popping into my head, these gruesome monsters and ghouls and the like. Mm. I don't watch horror and I don't ever see images like those. So this was very bizarre and concerning. Yeah. I would immediately banish the image or the pictures from my head and they would just pop in. And each time I passed a door or window, I would see a huge snarling dog bearing its teeth at me outside. This was in my mind's eye. It was very unnerving. Hmm. The first night we slept in the house, we didn't have any beds yet. We were too tired from uh, unpacking that night to drive back to the Airbnb in Savannah, so we just slept on the sofa in the floor. I didn't get any sleep. I just kept waking up feeling like someone was there. The next night, we were also too tired to drive back to Savannah, and honestly, the place in Savannah was pretty dusty, which isn't good for us to sleep in. But my husband insisted that we needed to go back to Savannah because he wasn't going to sleep here again until he got a bed. Um, He was being unusually stubborn and even mean, which he never, ever is. We had a huge fight about where to sleep, even though I was good with the floor and he was getting the couch. And we don't usually fight like that. He finally relented and stayed here, but we didn't get any sleep again. Our mattress arrived the next day, and that night we stayed in our new house again. Mm. When we were lying on the mattress about to go to sleep, I heard footsteps in the living room. I asked my husband, who doesn't even believe in ghosts, even though we've had many experiences with them, LOL, if he heard if he heard that, and he said, oh yes, I've heard footsteps and other strange noises in here every night since we've started sleeping here. Oh boy. This house is, fair, is strange. Yo. Alrighty then. Um, it, has been, uh, it has to be pretty bad for him to admit something like this. That's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. A few days went by. Some old, uh, same old, same old. We kept hearing sounds now, even during the day occasionally. We kept feeling like someone was here, and I kept seeing the images in my head, especially the dog, whenever I went near a window or a door. It got to the point where I just refused to be in the house alone ever. Luckily, my husband was off of work for the move, but um, he would be returning to his evening job soon. So I had to figure out what to do about his presence and about this presence in the house that just seemed hell bent on frightening us. Mm -hmm. We had just moved a long way across the country, and I wasn't going to run uh, to be run out of our new home. I finally texted a friend of mine in Atlanta who does house clearings and people clearings. I wanted to see if she was picking up the same vibes that we were and if she might have better luck than I had at sending whatever this was on its way. Um, I gave her a brief synopsis of what was happening. She told me that she, we had three ghosts, a 66-year-old man, a woman, and a 16-year-old girl. Hmm. She said that the man was the problem. He was really angry, and that was what we found so scary, his anger. I asked her if there was something on the land outside, too, because of the vicious dog I kept seeing whenever I passed next to the door or a window, but she said, no, the land is totally clear. The issue is in your house. Hmm. She said we would do a distance clearing on our um, home later that afternoon when she got through with a couple of clients. I could feel the second that she did the clearing uh, because the energy in the house changed immediately from frightening to peaceful. The presences were gone and the house felt empty and safe again. The frightening monster images in my head stopped, the sound stopped, and the feeling of being watched vanished too. (laughs) What a relief. But the images of the growling and snapping dog outside still showed up in my head whenever I went past a window or a door. Interesting. But on on the whole, I could tell that there were no more presences inside of the house, which was good. But sometime or something was still wrong outside of the house. I just knew it. Hmm. I met a couple of very cool neighbors who turned out to also be a bit woo woo. Um, (laughs) And I told them about my former ghosts. (laughs) 
They told me that they thought the angry man was the man who had built the house. They said he was very kind and a good person in life and everyone loved him. Aw, is what she said. Um, but that he would probably be, uh, be very angry that he had died without getting to fully enjoy his retirement mm. and get to do everything he wanted to do with the house, etc. He was the same age when he died as our male ghost. Interesting. There was also a woman who lived on our street who was murdered, so maybe she was the female ghost. Don't worry, everyone else on the street is doing it okay. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> After doing some research, it appears that our house could be located on what was part of the old Cold Brook Plantation at one point. Mm -hmm. This land was owned by the same people who owned Cold Brook anyway. Um, there is a very cool story I heard about the Cold Brook Plantation house which might have uh, something to do with our 16 year old ghost when sherman's troops arrived at cold brook the man who owned it was away and his pregnant wife was there to greet them she ple uh, she pleaded with the union soldiers to please spare the house because she would certainly miscarry if they burned it down and she had no place to live for some reason, they took pity on her and allowed the house to stand. They stole all of her valuables and took all of the horses, except for one, because earlier that day, her 16-year-old daughter had jumped out onto the, her horse and had ridden out to warn all of the other homeowners in the area that Sherman had arrived in the area quite a dang uh, had arrived in the area quite a dangerous thing to do for a 16-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. Um, I heard this story the same day I learned that we had a 16 year old female ghost, even though I didn't know if this girl died at 16, I believe that this is the age she prefers to be the age when she tried to help her neighbors. I do believe our 16 year old girl ghost was the same person onto the dog. I kept seeing outside a few weeks ago. I decided to do some gardening in the front yard. I had just opened my front door and began to step outside when a vicious dog lunged at me from behind my garage door, snapping at me. Luckily, I jumped back quickly enough to avoid being bitten. I wasn't at all the way outside of the house yet, and I was able to grab the door handle and pull myself back inside out of the way of the dog just in the nick of time. The door was a glass storm door, so I watched through it as the dog paced back and forth in front of the door, um, growling and baring its teeth at me. That was the dog I had been. Uh, that was the dog I had been seeing outside in my mind's wow. eye all of those weeks before. Turns out, my next door neighbor owns this vicious dog, so it has been outside of my house this entire time, over at his house. When I told my neighbors I was almost attacked, they told me that other neighbors also had the same unfortunate experience. Others had tried ta talking to this neighbor about the dog to no avail. One neighbor had even threatened to shoot the dog if it came after his dog and or child again. So this dog is a real problem on our street. Oh, yeah. We decided that since others had already tried talking to the neighbor that had done nothing, we would just report the incident to animal control immediately. As soon as we did, my visions of the vicious dog went away. I guess someone on the other side was trying to give me a heads up about this dog or maybe even get me to report it to keep it from attacking or scaring anyone. Um, I haven't seen the real dog again either since the animal control officer visited our neighbors. All's well that ends well in this ghostly part of Pooler. I hope you enjoyed this that story about our recent move to your neck of the woods. I'd love to hear any impressions that came to mind as you were listening to it. Yeah, wow. I just recently found your podcast, and I have a lot of episodes to catch up on. I love to listen to you every night while my husband is at work. Aw. That's very sweet. Yeah. And since the house isn't haunted at the moment, <laughs> it's no problem at all. Please keep up the great content. You three are the best. Sincerely, Jen and Pooler. Thanks, Jen. That Thanks, was Jen. excellent. That was a great... And uh, that was awesome. Yeah, you you covered all bases. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you sure you, did. You, you you gave us the ghost story. You gave us the ghost solution. It's all there. It's all the well packed up. Yeah, yeah you, you did all the research. We, we <laughs> so uh, that was awesome. Uh, my my uh, my only notes are um, great research. Great. Literally, well, yeah. Well done. A lot of people do not uh, do not spend any time uh, trying to figure it out as mm -hmm. much as they do you know trying to just deal with it, uh, which you did as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kudos. Yeah, kudos. Seriously, no, you you did literally everything we would have recommended right. to you. So it's uh, yeah, it's like ah uh, yeah, we might need to get some pointers from you actually. Yeah, 
No, seriously. Um, but very interesting, too, uh, that you were able to trace your exact property back to that plantation. Yes. Um, which yeah, yeah. is fascinating. And I think you're absolutely dead on, no pun intended, um, that it is probably that 16-year-old girl who was hanging out. and It was probably the most momentous thing she had done in her life. Exactly. So it, that becomes kind of the... Um, the age of awareness of who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's very likely we talk about that a lot on the show is that spirits can appear as they feel not, not, you know, if they died an old person, that doesn't mean you'll see an old person as the ghost. They may come back in the identity that they most uh, want to present as. So yeah, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Super cool. And I think you were right about the old man, you know, you're, um, I, I, I that would actually make a lot of sense that he would be very upset <laughs> that he didn't get to enjoy his dream home and things like that. Um, right, right. Uh, especially if you think that, you know, he worked all his life, got into retirement, built the house and then died literally. before really, you know, getting any of the enjoyment that he had saved up his whole life to, to have mm -hmm. that resentment sometimes builds up with spirits. And, uh, we like to call that unfinished business. That is some unfinished business right there. You know, um, if a part of me wonders, maybe the cleansing just kind of settled him. Um, I'd be interested to see if he, it, yeah, well, at the very least it, it addressed the, that activeness, right. You know, because yes. the spirits might still be there, but that, that cleansing doesn't always like mean the ghosts are gone. It just means it addressed the, the the spike of their behavior and maybe it, it just kind of mellowed out everything exactly so keep us um keep us up to date if you get any more spooky encounters mm -hmm. out there and yeah. i hope they got rid of that dog um that is horrible yeah and and just and even that there must be something about the location that that heightens your abilities to include precognizance i mean that's right. that's an impressive feat but given that you know, uh, your friend over the phone was able to say, oh, yeah, there are three spirits in your house suggests the level at which your house was 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 resonating with that kind of energy. So, you know, your house mm -hmm. may be just sitting on a very energetic, you know, uh, ley line or, you know, yeah. crossroads for spiritual energy. Uh, allowing you to tap into gifts that are that are that are beyond clairvoyance. And there's a lot of water over there too. So yep. a, a part of me wonders if that helps, you know, amp some things up. A lot of times if you're near a, a river or a creek or things like that, because if you're over sure. an old pooler, you probably are near something. I'm yeah. just I'm throwing ideas out there. But it's a very cool story. And honestly, Jen, if you want to come on the podcast, you're I was just about to so. I was just about to mention yeah. that. Yeah. I would love to we'd love to yeah. Hear We'd more love to speak from... to a professional medium, yeah, you know, because yeah. that's that's a fascinating field, and I don't think we've had a, a professional medium on. I don't think so. I don't mm -hmm. think so. But yeah, so Jen, let us know if you want to do that, because uh, I'd love to hear more about your your stories, mm -hmm. even in Atlanta or where you were across the country. So yeah, uh, so thank you, Jen. And so for our last ghost mail, we have Rowan. Um, so dear most haunted city gang. Um, that sounds like the Scooby-Doo gang. I like yeah. it. <laughs> I've been thinking about sending you an email for a while, but not sure how to write it out. I enjoy listening to the podcast and want to share the spooky goings on that have happened to me in my workplace. Mm. I'm from the UK and currently work in a nursing home for the elderly. Oh boy. I know. I yeah. already know you got oh, some yeah. creepy stories. As a night care assistant, it's not a, uh, spoken a lot about the fact that it being a home for the elderly, it's only natural that many people die whilst living within the home. Mm -hmm. Of course. It's a sad part of the job, but has made me more settled about the process of living and dying, as I used to be terrified of the whole idea. Now, I've been working in the nurse in a nursing home for the last two years, and it is an unspoken rule that anyone new who works in the home at night, we don't share experiences until they come to us, <laughs> so as to not scare new staff away. We have all had experiences, and so this isn't necessarily a story, but an ongoing list of experiences that I am sure will <laughs> wow. continue the longer I work there, and regular experiences that become a part of the job. There used to be an old lady who inhabited a room on the top floor whose Alzheimer's uh, was 
progressed so she didn't speak anymore, uh, but refused to go to her room or stay in there. The room was always has always and continues to give me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> uh, but one particular day, the woman had refused to go to bed all night, so I was sent to get her some clothes. There were four rooms at the top of the corridor parallel to each other. We, uh, we'll label them one, two, three, and four. One, two, and four were inhabited by elderly women and three, an elderly man. I had an uneasy feeling in my stomach going into room two to gather the ladies' clothes. Eyes to the floor, straight to the wardrobe, and out again. As I left the room, I heard a man's voice in my ear say, leave the curtains. Oh, wow. Mm. I checked rooms one, three, and four, and they all remained asleep. Okay, I said in a small voice and tried my best not to run down the corridor. Uh, the lady who lives in this room now often talks about a man telling her things, but I haven't heard anything from this room since. Um, the next one says, I was once setting the dining room for breakfast when the door leading to the additional lounge started rattling. This also happened to me next to room one and on another corridor. It lasts about 30 seconds, but in the dead of night, it can be really creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Um, another one is on one of my checks with another member of staff. I was walking along the lower corridor and the lid from one of the bins in the bathroom around the corner was thrown at me Whoa. and just missed. All the residents on the lower floor are bed bound and most were asleep at that point in time. Hmm. Um, some more is we've had stories from residents regarding a woman and two children visiting them throughout the night. This annoys some patients and we get calls to remove them from the bedroom. So we sometimes have to act out telling them to leave so the patient can sleep. Wow. A little girl has also been described by separate residents with lovely curly hair and it's beautifully dressed in a white uh, penny dress and painted shoes. Mm. We see regular shadow people. We have a three o'clock shadow um, that you can see the movement of the feet below the door, but can see no, uh, no one through the glass in the door. Wow. I also once was getting frustrated with a resident who kept coming back to our station and asking the time. I reiterate that he cannot go into other people's bedrooms due to privacy. Mm -hmm. At one point, I saw the black or the back end of someone as they were walking into a room and presumed it was this man. I went over to guide him back to his room, but he wasn't there, and he and had laid back down on his bed to sleep. I haven't mentioned that to one of uh, to <laughs> <Yeah>. other staff. <laughs> I was once sitting in the reception area with a couple of other staff members chatting whilst we were doing our paperwork. We stopped talking, hearing footsteps along the corridor behind the reception, waiting for someone to come through the door as they sound sounded like they uh, were getting nearer, but no one came through. It's a haunted place. Literally, the hallway was empty. This happened a few times that particular night. These are the ones that come to mind <laughs> as I write this, but I am sure there are many other experiences that I sometimes choose to ignore. I follow a guy on TikTok called Latinos Against Spooky Shit, uh, which, <laughs> <laughs> which really cracks me up. But to help me from not being scared, I remind myself that I saw something. If I saw something, I didn't. <laughs> I, al I also presume that if we have done the best care for our for these people in their last days slash years, then they aren't going to hurt us. I also carry Labradorite, Tiger's Eye, and Black Tourmaline for protection on my work keys and Lipidolite in my bra to keep me calm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks for reading. Sorry it's so long. Peace and love, Rowan. No, I love a good compilation of yeah. Sp yeah. spooky that was things. Great. Um, no, that was fantastic. And it... It's not surprising. Uh, immediately when you said that you work in a nursing home, we all were like, okay, oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. And I think a lot of these encounters, some of them sounds to me at least like loved ones or spirits that are attached to these people who sure. are just trying to also make them comfortable in their latter years, um, especially the woman. With two children. Yes. I found that one very interesting. Intriguing. It is very interesting. Yeah, same. Um, you know, because that could be uh, siblings and a mother figure for that person, uh, because, you know, how, how we've mentioned in the past that sometimes spirits don't sh show as, you know, their age that they passed and sometimes they want to be children or it could be those 
that's how the spirits are presenting because that's how that person wants to remember their loved ones and they're coming to help them cross over. Or just the concept of the joy that a visit would bring mm -hmm. and a spirit creating a mimicry of the, of, of the, the facsimility of family visiting. When you think of like um, a daughter coming with their children to visit grandma or grandpa in the nursing home and the kind of joy that that would elicit from the people living there, it's possible that the spirits are trying to recreate that joyfulness, you know, and, and it may not be any, any particular woman and child. It could be a representation in hopes of eliciting peace and joy. And, you know, it could be just a goodwill spirit, uh, not understanding that showing up at three o'clock in the morning. That's not the time. <laughs> it, yeah. It will cause more trouble than not. I especially like the idea of people like calling in, get these people out of my room. You know, it's like, <laughs> what are you doing? It's time to sleep. And they're like, oh, grandpa. <laughs> oh, grandpa. It is, it is I. It is I. But yeah, I mean, I love nursing homes stories. I think they're so endlessly fascinating, especially because. Yeah, I, I very rarely hear scary stories from those establishments right. because mm -hmm. those establishments are generally about care. Yes. Um, and I'm sure there are scary stories. Don't get me wrong. It's just that I, uh, I have yet to really encounter any. Um, so, you know, kudos for, for running an organization that seems to be helping yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and being kind. And even the creepiest one where it was the man saying, leave the curtains, you know, yeah. it's like, I still think that could be somebody's loved one being like, she yeah. likes the she curtains, likes curtains open. <laughs> she leave likes the curtain. Don't close the curtain. She likes looking outside. <laughs> I realize you're in the UK and this is not the accent of the guy who was sitting there <laughs> <laughs> talking about the curtains. But that is the man's voice that we are associating. Yeah, that, yes. <laughs> Could you leave the curtains open, please? Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. But thank you, Rowan, so much for sending your stories. And if your coworkers also want to send some stories about their experiences, let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, we love hearing them. All. But anyways, thank you so much, y'all, for sending in your ghost mail. If you have a ghost mail that you would like to send in, you can send it to haunted, or ghost mail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Um, and we are always, always ready to hear a good ghost story. So, and... Don't feel bad for sending long ghost mails. We want details, y'all. No, we, we went long. Yeah, go long. <laughs> go long. Uh, but with that, y'all, thank you so much again. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. Stay spooky, y'all.